Hi, it's Clemmie from the Narm Clinic and in this week's video I'm going to be covering vitamin B12 and folate when it comes to inflammatory bowel disease. So first of all, what is vitamin B12? So vitamin B12 is one of the B vitamins and has many roles in our bodies. So deficiencies um, in B12 can um, lead to things like fatigue, um, pale or slightly yellowing skin, also shortness of breath, um, heart palpitations, diarrhea, also tingling in your fingers and toes or lack of coordination. So we get vitamin B12 from the food that we eat. Um, and it can be found in things like meat, especially um, organ meat, things like liver, but also fish, shellfish, dairy products, eggs, and also you can find it in some fortified breakfast cereals and in fermented foods. Now, B12 is um, absorbed in the ileum. So those with ileocolitis, and that's Crohn's in the ileum, um, and anyone who's had an ileal resection is at greater risk of vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, um, also anyone who's following a vegan diet is also more at risk of B12. And you would have seen from the list that I just said of the foods that it is available in, it's mainly founded in, uh, found in animal sources of food. So vitamin B12 injections are quite commonly given to people with Crohn's disease uh, or where uh, people have had that ileum resection. However, studies have actually shown that oral B12 supplementation actually provides effective maintenance treatment um, and also acute treatment for B12 deficiency um, caused by Crohn's disease, and that's with or without a, an um, ileum resection. And this is because even without an ileum, it is estimated that around 1% of the total absorption of B12 is actually by something called passive diffusion, which happens throughout the small intestine. So in these instances, obviously higher doses of oral B12 um, would be needed um, to ensure normal levels of B12. Um, and also there are still some cases um, that injections are appropriate for. Now, secondly, what is folate? So folate, which is also called vitamin B9 or folic acid, which you might have heard of. And just a note there that folic acid is the synthetic form of B9, which is found in supplements and in fortified foods. And folate is the one that occurs naturally in foods. Now, um, folate and B12 work very closely together um, and folate has many roles in our body as well and symptoms of folate deficiency um, include things like poor growth, um, inflammation of the tongue, uh, gingivitis, uh, loss of appetite, again shortness of breath, diarrhea, irritability, um, forgetfulness and mental sluggishness as well. So like vitamin B12, um, we get folate from the foods that we eat. Now it can be found in dark green leafy vegetables, uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, asparagus, and also peas, chickpeas, uh, liver and fortified breakfast cereals. Um, folate is also absorbed in our ileum. So those with ileocolitis, um, which is again Crohn's in the ileum or anyone who's had an ileal resection is at greater risk of folate deficiency as well. So prevalence of deficiency of these in inflammatory bowel disease. So B12 deficiency um, in Crohn's disease is about 48% and in ulcerative colitis is about 5%. And folate deficiency um, is a little higher. Um, in Crohn's disease, it's 54% and ulcerative colitis around 36%. Now, there's something I wanted to mention here that's quite important um, and it complicates things slightly, but um, some people have a genetic variation um, or a SNP in their genetic code, um, and that inhibits the way that the body processes folic acid, so that's the synthetic form found in supplements, um, and also other um, important B vitamins. And studies have shown an increased prevalence of this gene variant in patients with inflammatory bowel disease when compared to the normal population. Um, and in this group of people, so people with inflammatory bowel disease and the people with these, this genetic variant, 
Um, the type of B vitamin supplement that's given is really, really important. Um, and a supplement which contains the active forms of folate and B12, which are the, um, the methylated forms, should be used. So what can we do about it? So I would encourage you to get um, tested for your B12 and folate levels if you haven't had that done and you're worried you might be deficient. This is a simple blood test that you can have done with your GP. And if you are someone who's at more risk, then you should have this done quite regularly anyway. Now we can support our um, B12 and folate levels by consuming the foods that I mentioned above. Um, and that just helps for anyone who's worried that um, they're not might not be getting enough, then looking at including those foods can be really helpful. And the last thing is um, it might be appropriate in some cases if there is a deficiency to supplement or get B12 injections if they're required. Um, so the British Society of Gastroenterology guidelines suggest um, B12 replacement for all patients with ileal resection greater than 20 centimetres and yearly monitoring of B12 levels for patients with ileal resection below 20 centimetres. Now something important to note when we're talking about um, B vitamin supplementation is that long-term supplementation of one single B vitamin on its own can put you at risk of um, an imbalance of the other B vitamins. So a B complex can sometimes be a good option there. And if you want to read more about this, I've put some links to some papers um, on the blog post that accompanies this video. So please uh, check that out and we will see you again soon.